The cost of student of college is absolutely insane. He'll be a senior next year, and then we'll have to be dealing with that, and we've been looking at colleges. We definitely know the struggle and feel that, but she's the one that pays for it. More and more Americans are asking themselves, is a college degree still worth it? With inflation hitting American pockets hard and tuition costs rising, folks are rethinking higher education. It's only worth it if you have an extremely high-paying job as a result of that, like maybe law, you know, law school, going into law after that, but a lot of other fields, it's not really worth it in my opinion. I see my mom, she's still, 30 years later, still paying off um, college debt. So, I mean, I, I, I don't want to be in that position 30 years from now. Was your college degree worth it? Many Americans are rethinking the value of higher education on the country at the same time that Republicans are floating the idea of defunding public education and the Department of Education. I'm Yasmin Khan with Rebel HQ, and a recent report from New America found that the number of Americans who believe higher education institutions have a positive impact on the country has dropped 14 percentage points since 2020. And this probably isn't a surprising finding for many of you to hear, and maybe you're a part of that 14% that has lost faith in the American college and university system. If you are, who could blame you? Personally, I have very mixed feelings about all of it. Were my degrees worth the debt that it stuck me with? The debt that I'll mention was significantly less than that of my friends? I don't really know how to answer that. And the reason why I struggle with it is because the question is flawed. It relies on the premise that value explicitly refers to monetary value. It excludes any other form of value that could possibly be ascribed to an experience. And functionally, higher education is an experience more than it is a degree that you just go and buy. But the report found that generally, recipients of post-secondary degrees found their return on investment to be worth the expenses and the debt of acquiring them. Whether that means the things that they learned, the people they met, the connections they made, the experience of living away from home immediately after high school, or of course, the job it afforded them upon graduation. Now to that last point, approximately two thirds of respondents agreed that many high paying and stable jobs are available to people who only have high school diplomas or GEDs, but many also agree that multiple degrees and certifications is better for finding consistent employment. So with that in mind, the decline in favorability was more linked to the impacts the costs of higher education have had on American society, and the report noted some interesting political divides within the results. For instance, 73% of Democrats believe that colleges and universities overall impact the country positively, while only 37% of Republicans think so. Similarly, 77% of Democrats believe that higher education costs should be covered by the government, which is in line with the belief amongst Democrats that higher education positively impacts the community and the country, so it should be viewed as a public service. Conversely, 63% of Republicans think it should be an out-of-pocket expense for students, which makes sense considering Republicans tend to see higher education as more of a personal investment, an option for individual betterment, but not a requirement for one to function in society. Additionally, only 18% of Democrats believe a high school diploma is a sufficient amount of education to ensure someone's financial security, but 31% of Republicans think so, a difference of 13 percentage points. Of course, people have very different ideas of what financial security looks or feels like. But with surveys like this, they're typically measuring people's perceptions to get a sense of the nation's overall sentiment. The differences between Democrats and Republicans that are reflected in the report are interesting because they do seem to fall in line with each party's overall ideologies, and those underlying governing ideologies are of particular interest right now as we find our country in a battle for minds. Currently, the Republicans are lashing out against cancel culture while actively banning books and threatening librarians. They're complaining about indoctrination in schools while advocating for more religion, prayer, and creationism in public secular schools. Two of the nation's worst GOP governors, DeSantis in Florida and Abbott here in Texas, have both taken steps to weaken the public school systems in their respective states. You have Republicans talking about defunding the Department of Education, including the former head of the department advocating for it, and the Supreme Court recently slackened the limitations on religious schools receiving public funding. 
We won't even get into the GOP's initiatives to rewrite history in classrooms, to ignore traumas of the past, or to present both sides of horrific events like the Holocaust and slavery and American imperialism. Meanwhile, the Democrats, especially the more progressive Democrats, have been advocating for increased access to higher education because the costs of a college degree these days are serving as gatekeepers to knowledge, skills, and most importantly, opportunities. Higher education has already become, or is quickly becoming, a perk of the wealthy and the privileged in this country. It's become less about merit, intellect, and hard work, and more about who can afford the tuition in the first place, or rather, whose parents can. That combined with efforts to diminish public education doesn't bode well for future generations. Also, when viewed within the context of affordability, it begins to feel discriminatory for job listings to feature degree requirements when obtaining degrees is no longer a viable option for many Americans. If the cost of higher education isn't mitigated, it will further exacerbate class divisions and inequality within the country. Personally, I'm a big fan of education, and I've always thought that the majority of problems in this country could at least be ameliorated, if not largely remedied, with greater access to good education. Now, that's a generalization, of course, but even within my own generalization, the question of what constitutes a good education is at the crux of this debate. For example, do I think religion has a place in secular schools? Sure. There's a lot of history there. A ton of literary context comes from religious texts. I don't even mind creationism being taught in schools, assuming the creation stories of various religions are taught, not just the one in the Bible. But I do have a problem with creationism being taught as anything other than mythology, as if it's an equally plausible explanation for why any of us are here as what science can offer. And honestly, why are any of us here? That's another question for another day. All right, that's it for today. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you like the channel, please subscribe to it. And if you want more of me, you can follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks so much for being here.